Shot clock for five. James has to fire. And oh, scores! Oh, my. What a shot by LeBron. James off balance. Shot clock running down. He had no angle, and he drilled it. This is at the wind. This is Jordan Nass. This is Rashid Wallace, NBA champion. This is a 22-year-old LeBron James, and LeBron is in the midst of one of the greatest performances in NBA history, a game that has since been dubbed LeBron's 48 Special. LeBron scoring 25 straight points for the Cavaliers, propelling his team to a playoff victory in a classic overtime thriller. To this day, this is one of LeBron's hallmark performances, but if you ask Rashid Wallace about this game, it's almost like it never even happened. Months ago, during an appearance on the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast, Rashid Wallace was asked about his thoughts on current NBA players and how well they would do back in his era. One of the players that came up was LeBron James, and Rashid had this to say. A beast was solved. Steph Curry. Uh, and we talking about from your era. We not talking about from this era. Would a game change? We talk about if they was playing in your era, would they be? Oh, oh, soft. Okay. Um, you talking my era saw. James Hart. My again, my era saw. LeBron James. He probably he probably would have done good because with his physical stature, with him being a little bit bigger than a majority of the rest. So he probably would have held his own, but I don't think he would have been as successful as he is now. Like now is man. You know what I mean? Like like he's doing it. Young boy doing it. You know what I mean? So but it was a whole different era back then, bro. So, beast or soft? I, I just told you. A beast then. You know, I think I think he would have held his own. I can't necessarily say he would have been a beast, but I think he would have held his own. Now, there has been this trend recently of former NBA players throwing shade at current NBA players, saying they would never make it back in their era. These new players are too soft or too small. This has been the case for years. Former pros hating on current pros. But this comment Rashid made about LeBron brings things to a whole new level. Because despite Rashid's apparent memory loss, LeBron played in the same era he did. This isn't a case of a player from, let's say, the 80s taking shot at a current player that just entered the league. A hypothetical situation that has no real evidence or conclusion. Rashid and LeBron literally played each other all the time. They were in the same conference. They were in the same division. Rashid said LeBron would probably have done well, but wouldn't have found as much success falling somewhere between a beast and soft. But history says otherwise. Now, Rashid Wallace played in the NBA for 16 seasons, his prime taking place from the 1999-2000 season to the 2006-2007 season. LeBron James was drafted in 2003, right around the time Rashid Wallace was at his peak. Rashid's best season during those peak years was with the Portland Trailblazers when he averaged 19-8 a game, shooting 47% from the field. At the same time, a teenage LeBron James in his first NBA season was putting up similar numbers. And by LeBron's second season in the NBA, he was already a superstar at just 20 years old. These numbers came in the exact era Rashid said LeBron wouldn't thrive in. In fact, in LeBron's first two seasons in the NBA, while Rashid was in his prime, the two of them matched up seven times. And in those seven matchups, LeBron in his first two seasons in the league was already putting up huge numbers against Rashid. Now, at the time, Rashid played for the Blazers and the Pistons, two of the toughest and most physical teams in the NBA. And LeBron was doing this to them. Does this look like a player who's too soft to handle that era? But to be fair, Wallace never said LeBron wouldn't be better than he was, he just said he wouldn't have found as much success, and he certainly wouldn't have been a beast. But by the time Wallace retired from the NBA, LeBron was already a six-time All-Star, had made it to the Conference Finals twice, made it to the NBA Finals, won back-to-back -back MVPs, made two All-Defensive teams, and made six All-NBA teams. That's already a Hall of Fame resume before Rashid even retired from the NBA. LeBron could have played those seven seasons, called it quits and retired from the NBA, and he still would have found enough success to make the Basketball Hall of Fame. So the idea that he wouldn't have found as much success in Rashid's era is just flat out wrong. This statement from Rashid would be the equivalent to LeBron in 20 years saying that Luka Doncic wouldn't have dominated in his era. Not only does this not make any sense, it's literally, objectively, inaccurate. But here's the craziest part about this entire thing. 
Statistically, LeBron was just as dominant in Rashid's era as he has been since Rashid's era. In the seven seasons LeBron played in the NBA at the same time as Rashid Wallace, these were his numbers. And in the seven seasons after Rashid retired, these are LeBron's numbers. Nearly identical aside from the championships. But just because LeBron wasn't winning rings doesn't mean he wasn't winning. In fact, while Rashid was in Detroit, his most successful years during his NBA career, LeBron was contributing nearly more wins than anyone else in the NBA, including his 2004-2005 season when he came in fourth in win shares when he was just 20 years old. I compiled a list of players that played during Rashid's era and after Rashid's era, players that peaked towards the end of Rashid's prime, and I compared their numbers from Rashid's era to their numbers post Rashid's era. And wouldn't you know it, there is virtually no correlation between the era and the success they had offensively. If anything, most of these players had less offensive output after Rashid's era. Keep in mind, every one of these players played against LeBron, Curry, Harden, Durant, all of the players Rashid Wallace said wouldn't dominate his era. And yet, all of the current players I just named went toe to toe with these players and found plenty of success. See, the thing is, most players are young enough that older players can make these statements and there's no way to know if it's true or not because they never played each other. But LeBron's an old man at this point. Dude's been in the NBA so long that he actually played against a lot of these former players. We got the receipts right here. But what happens when a former player from before LeBron's time says he wouldn't cut it in a tougher, more physical NBA? So my last question, can you lock up LeBron? In your old, in your days, in your days. You know, no one could lock up LeBron. I mean, like that Scotty could. Scotty Pippen would have locked up LeBron. Oh, yeah. LeBron is so easy to play. He's so fucking easy to play. He don't have any moves. He ain't got no moves. Where's he going? Where's he going? That's quick. Straight downhill, man. And just no, I'm saying that'll be shit. You stop that. Scotty Pippen is gonna shut his ass down quick before I get to him. This game is too simple. He just big. Now, 260, whatever, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, that's the only thing he got, pretty much. I play a guy 7 foot 300, so it doesn't really matter. Dennis Rodman is one of the greatest defenders in NBA history, and certainly one of the toughest. But the absolute cap I am hearing right now is immaculate. Sure, could Rodman give LeBron problems? Yeah. Could he do a better job of defending LeBron than any current NBA player? Probably. But Rodman saying that he could lock up LeBron is blasphemy. There's really no great 80s, 90s player comparison to LeBron, but let's take one of the greatest small forwards of all time, Larry Bird. When Rodman matched up against Bird throughout the 80s and early 90s, Bird averaged 25, 8, and 7 a game against Rodman and the Pistons. And most of these games took place when Bird was an old man with a bad back. I find it hard to believe that LeBron would struggle to find success against Rodman when a 33-year-old Larry Bird with a back brace was doing this to him. But Rodman said that one of the main reasons why he could stop LeBron is because his game is simple. He relies on his strength and athleticism too much, which makes his game easier to contain. So this time, let's see how Rodman did against a player who relied literally on his strength and athleticism throughout his entire career. Karl Malone, a man with a nearly identical build as LeBron. 27, 10, and three a game. Rodman couldn't stop or even slow Bird or Malone down. Because as great of a defender as he was, good offense beats good defense. And LeBron is one of the most gifted offensive players the game has ever seen. On a podcast earlier this year, former NBA player Gilbert Arenas gave his two cents on this debate, and his stance was very clear. You know, when people talk about, you know, who was better, the 92 team or the this and this team, and then you always say, uh, what rules? <laughs> what, what rules? What, what, what rules are we playing under? Are we playing under... You know, rock 'em sock 'em robot style rules, and you know what I mean. If 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 so, you're gonna have to really let this this group adjust to you know prison basketball. If you're trying to play this style, then th this new style, then these 92 guys they can't keep up because they don't have the equipment, they don't have the the, the tools, they don't have the skill set, and that's why when you know when you know back in the day when I was like, yo, Dennis Rodman, they, they would have killed a six seven 210 pound guy wouldn't be stopping LeBron James. Let it go. You, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't. You know, he's a point guard. You were great at defending people who's back to the basket. He's going downhill. Eh. <laughs> this, your strength, your brute strength has no bearing on, on downhill guards. 
you know, when you sit and say all oh, the players are soft and they couldn't last in my era, it's, it's false. It's a false statement. You're looking at the game from rules and adapting to it. Now, Rashid Wallace and Dennis Rodman are both on record saying that they would also shut down Kevin Durant. What about KD? KD, same thing. I mean, once you get to know people's game, once, once you know people's game, it's very easy to play them. They're just long, they're just tall. Kevin Durant. And in that era, uh, I, no, I don't think he would have had too much success. Now he's, he's a monster. And I'm starting to see a trend here. It's almost like Rashid and Rodman are contributing Durant's success, not to the fact that he's a seven foot sharpshooting demigod with a handle, but rather simply because of the era he plays in. As if similar to LeBron, if KD played in their era, he would be just another good score, one of many. But here's the thing, neither Rashid or Dennis have ever played against a player like Durant in their entire careers. There's never been a player like him. And if there hasn't been a single defender in Durant's 14 year NBA career that could stop him, what makes these former players think they could? I don't care what you do to Durant. Bump him, talk trash, hand check him, clothesline him, poke his eye out, it doesn't matter. The dude is still putting buckets on your head. That's how generational talent works. You cannot stop him. You can only hope to contain him. Doesn't matter who you are or what era you played in. A lot of older NBA players feel like the NBA has become soft and that most skill sets current players have would not be useful in their era. Today's players are just too soft. Or as the old heads would say, today's players would be crying by halftime. But here's the thing, great players are going to excel in any era. That's what makes them great. Their ability to adapt to their surroundings and pick apart whatever you throw at them. Today's players complain about no calls more than ever because they've grown accustomed to drawing fouls over things that shouldn't be fouls. Are they soft or are they just acting soft to their benefit? They say it's soft because they're watching the players complain about fouls, right? Well, we're complaining about fouls because the rules that were being told told us this is, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. So, you know, that's what we're going to argue about. Well, that's the rules. You can't say I'm soft because these are the rules and I'm wondering where my foul is. You know, if you was allowed to clothesline and we can clothesline each other, I would that, that would have been the style. It been, there's no complaining because that's, we know that's, but I'm, I'm, I'm designing my game off of the rules. The NBA has tailored the game to becoming softer because more fouls equals more points, and more points means more superstars, which the league can then market to fans to sell more tickets, more jerseys, and so on. There's a reason why as LeBron's career has progressed, he has complained and flopped more and more each season. LeBron literally bullied grown men in Rashid's era, but just like every other current NBA player, he's adjusted his game to suit the current rules and situations. This is the same reason why a guy like Reggie Miller is still considered to be one of the greatest shooters of all time despite having a worse career three-point percentage than Bren Forbes. Because we can all assume that if Reggie played in today's era, he would have practiced shooting more threes, he would have played in a system better suited for shooting more threes, and he would have taken more threes. He would adjust his game according to what the league demands. At the end of the day, this all just comes down to generational bias. It's in our nature to want to preserve and protect things that we care about. Most people are subjectively sentimental over things that they like from their time, almost territorial at times. And this applies to former players and older fans. But this also applies to younger fans and their favorite players. Some younger fans will swear Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would be average in today's league because delusion doesn't discriminate age. And a lot of us refuse to accept that every era has generational players, and the fact is these players would thrive in any era. But very rarely do we have tangible evidence to actually prove this to be the case. I guess the lesson here is if you're gonna call a player out in an argument about era, just make sure he didn't play in the same era as you did. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.